Hey Shibi Doodlers, how are you doing? Uh, well, I've got nine days left to illustrate my book, Special Delivery. This is the dummy. Uh, it's all uh, a f just a printout, uh, which I'm put together to, to let me know exactly what the book would look like and feel like. And today I've been illustrating this page, uh, which I'm just going to show you now. But while I did it, uh, I was talking a lot about the paper that I use uh, and how I stretch it out and things because I had questions from you yesterday about that. If you've got other questions you want to ask me about illustrating and stuff like that, I can answer while showing you my special delivery illustrations over the next eight days it will be. Uh, put them in the comments box below. But now let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's do it. I've got all my drawing done and since we're talking about materials I use a rotary Tiki Graphic 0.3 and this is a kind of fibre tip pen. I've been using these for years. It took a long time to find. <laughs> this one's running out. I like this because there is a pigment ink it dries really quickly. It dries waterproof, which is really important when you're doing watercolour, when you're doing line and wash watercolour. It's really great for taking out with you. They're really cheap um, comparatively. You know, it's just like, you know, another ballpoint pen price. It's a shame you have to throw them away at the end, but you know, that's the way it goes. Single use plastic, but I get a lot of use out of it. So I've drawn out the next page that I want to uh, paint. And Sepa Muscles yesterday says, Hi Shu, I was wondering what paper you are using. That's a very good question. Uh, this, I did actually mention in, in yesterday's video, uh, this paper is called CS2, and I'm afraid you cannot get it. Um, I used to love using this when I was an art student. This is what we all used when I was an art student. And then uh, the company who made it, I think they were bought by Frisk and then something went wrong and either Frisk went bust at the time. I can't, rem I can't remember what happened. Anyway, the paper mill closed down and they stopped making CS2 and I was heartbroken. One day I was in an art shop and I was m saying about CS2 and, and they said, we've got some downstairs. <laughs> and so, so they had this huge pack of it, an enormous pack. Um, so it's probably, oh, Wait a minute, that's A4, A3, A2, A1-ish size, uh, about 200 plus sheets, maybe even more, 250 sheets or something. So I said, I'm having that. <laughs> so I bought it all from them and uh, and I'm slowly working my way through it. And, and I use, and I save every little bit of it. So I've been uh, cutting bits off here and things. And I, I got piles and piles of these little bits here. So I save every bit of it and use every bit of it. Now, another question I had was from Simply Patrice, who says, Hi, Shu, I've recently started illustrating traditionally, and although I prep my paper and use tape, how do you keep your watercolour paper from warping while painting? Prep. I am assuming by prepping your paper that you are soaking your paper and you are using this kind of gummed paper tape, um, and then you put the gum paper tape around it and let it dry. I stopped doing that years ago. One thing I found was that when I wet the paper and let it uh, and, and then stretched it in the old fashioned way, I found the surface of the paper uh, got destroyed, particularly CS2 and, and sort of these uh, hot pressed, um, not really flat papers. And Sepa, one of the closest things I've come across actually is, is this one here, which is the Langton watercolour hot pressed, hot pressed smooth grand satiné. And this is 300 grams so and it's it's not not cheap but you know if you want good watercolor paper you're always going to have to pay for it so what do i do i you may have seen me do this before i use this tape uh 3m 101e and i've tried lots of tapes in my time and uh and the what this has replaced another one previously and this is it so i have to find out which one to get here so i get this tape and it's masking tape, but it's it's kind of not for the building trade, as it were. And then I kind of press down there and really push out sideways. And then you're going to notice this paper isn't quite square because I've got this on a board. It's on an angle, which is what you want for watercolor. And then uh, I need another piece down here. Um, and then what I do is I press all the way down along the bottom of the paper and pull very, very gently, just bit by bit, and kind of pulling this way as well, like that. And then very, very gently pulling this way 
just pull it all down and then press. And then we're going to want to do similar things on the side. So press down onto the paper and then oh, just kind of pulling it. And it's very easy to tear the paper. So you just kind of get used to how much, <laughs> quite how you do this. And you can maybe see little kind of ruckles in the tape there. And then we're going to do that again. And I'm just going to press, press. Ah, you see what happens. I haven't pressed it down onto the paper enough. So it's pull and press, pull and press. And now that is stretched out. So what happens is when you uh, when you paint on the paper, it all kind of relaxes. <laughs> all those fibers in there, they relax. And this is what makes paper buckle when you watercolor. So that all the paper, it'll, it'll buckle. But then as it dries, it all stretches and it kind of pulls itself back together again. And if you can, you know, leave it on there for a little bit after you finish the painting and when it's really, really dry, then you will find it is really pretty flat. Um, and so, it's, but I usually just want to get on with it. So I usually get my hairdryer, dry the whole thing, slam it on the scanner. So sometimes it might kind of be a little bit crinkly. But, but for instance, this is the one I did yesterday and you can see it's it's flat you know and that's a large area that i've done it it is slightly maybe curved but then that will be to the grain of the paper so my advice is <laughs> don't wet your paper don't soak it don't use paper tape <laughs> use 3m101e i'll put an amazon link in down below now the other thing people ask me about is what do i paint with and i'm going to treat myself to a new brush today you'll find these um brushes they do kind of go a bit hairy and the bits break well, the one I was using yesterday oh that's really really fun that's not that one <laughs> the one I was using yesterday you can see it's it starts to deteriorate and it, you know no, no brush lasts forever and you kind of feel with a plastic brush like this that they should do and it would be really nice if you could get replacement <laughs> brush heads that you don't have to keep buying more plastic and you know maybe yeah maybe we should get on to uh, Pentel about that but you know then they're not going to make profits and it's oh you know it's it's a nightmare isn't it so this is a water brush and you unscrew the handle this is the other thing I have masses of is kitchen towels I'm just going to make sure I got a wad of this underneath just to catch <laughs> um, and I am going to I would normally do this under the tap, so I'm just going to, there we go. That is now full of water, and I'm going to then screw it back onto the handle. And what happens then is you give it a bit of a squeeze, and the water starts to flow down through the brush. And it's great for going out sketching, but it's just something you just pick up and use, and you don't have all those dirty old jam gels of filthy water and, and it's it's kind of really economical on your on your paint as well i'm going to zoom in there so i am going to what can you see here you can see i'm sort of putting water onto there always have kitchen towel kitchen towel and pentel brushes go together <laughs> and and you'll find links to this down below as well so uh, i'm going to start with naples yellow and um and I'm just going to paint them in quickly. And I have got 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, I have to go and get my aged mother <laughs> from the hairdressers. It's one of those days today. So I've got this uh, uh, self-imposed deadline that I want to finish this book. Penny and Benny, a special delivery in 11 days. And now I've got nine days left. So I'm now going to get a little bit of redness I'm just going to drop a bit of pink in around there and maybe around the pores as well um so I've got the self-imposed deadline and because I just happen to have this bit of time while well, everyone's away on vacation <laughs> and I can just get on and do this and there we go um but, of course, other things will 
get in the way, like taking my mother to the hairdressers and things like that. So I took her up before I started this video. I left her, I've come back, zoomed down, doing this video, and then, <laughs> and then uh, I've got to go and pick her up when she's done. And then this afternoon, I've got to take her to the dentist. Oh, it's, yeah. So there's always something, isn't there? When you think you've got it all sorted out. And this is where you have to keep referring back to the uh, the thing I did yesterday. So he's wearing a pink shirt and a kind of a grey tag. I want to say cardigan. It's not a cardigan, is it? A sweatshirt a jumper thing. iPad. Tablet. It's obviously not an iPad, is it? So I'm very aware of um, putting little cat symbols over everything, and and there was uh, an album, which was one of my favourite albums when I was younger. By um, anyway, it's called Year of the Cat. Al Stewart and the album there. The album cover was beautifully illustrated and it had lots and lots of sort of cat symbols on everything. And I, I, I must have stared at that album an awful lot when I was younger. And um, so if I'm going to put a link here, I'll find Year of the Cat, find a song for you. And, um, and so I think that's always been in the back of my mind, that, that image. And uh, so I don't think I'm copying anything from there but uh, you know it, it's it's obviously something that has influenced me in the past <laughs> so yeah so professionals steal just get on with it and don't muck about um yeah that's a bit needs to be a bit more blue this i think i'm gonna put a bit of blue in yeah, and you, you have all these sort of influences and you don't kind of realise them until quite often. Sometimes I've done a book and, and, and I've gone through a great long process of producing a book with an editor and all sorts of stuff and we've talked about it and spent years rewriting it and spent years <laughs> illustrating it. And then the first time I go to a school and present, or, you know, wherever, a book festival or something, present the book and I get up and start read it and I go... Oh, <laughs> and I'll see these incredible influences, and 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 I get and I and I get really embarrassed. And I've copied that, and I, and I and I and I get really embarrassed. And I go home and I check. I'm like, no, I haven't copied. It, it's it's an influence, and that's how these things work. And uh, as Newton said, we all stand on the shoulders of giants, and we uh, we don't copy. We're influenced. And build on each other's work and I know I've had another comment on, on one of my videos showing you how to trace and, and I'm a great believer in tracing and I, I use tra I trace an awful lot uh, I've traced this but I it's my original drawing I've traced the drawing because I've spent hours oh I've got to go and get my mum <laughs> the alarm has gone off I'm tracing my own drawing I spent hours planning this out working working it all out and it's for this particular drawing I have it has to be this particular shape in this particular place to fit on a particular page. And that's why I do all my roughs and then I trace through for the final drawing. So I had this comment today saying, you know, on, on this video I've done, uh, you know, saying tracing is good for you because I think that's how you can really learn uh, by sort of tracing over other people's work and seeing how do they do that? How does that line work? And so tracing is not drawing, it is cheating. And people get really, really upset about it. Better go and get my mum. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. If you've got other questions you want to ask me, put them in the comments box down below. In the meantime, uh, keep watching, 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 drawing, 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 and all that stuff. I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.